Thank you, Alok ji, and thank you, Dr. Madhurima and Honorable, uh, you know, Vice Chancellor. Uh, I think it is very difficult to speak after Alok ji has spoken. You, you tell me what have you not covered about the <laughs> psychological and counselling area and the uh, very very pressing problems of society and the realistic assessment of yours that. what needs to be built into the system in order to do a therapeutic in the mind programming of the mind so i uh, really thank you for setting the tone and giving us the primer related to all these leads and uh, i will also touch upon uh, some of these because that was uh, my planning as well and uh, as you said that uh, uh, there is no career counseling centers around many many parents i also feel they come to me they call me and they say that okay where i should send my child i have so many options you know so more than child the parent is perplexed parent has a heart attack kind of situation where the child has to make a choice so i always tell them i said rather than you understanding from me why don't you connect me to your child let the child understand from me directly that what options are there before the child now this is where i think most of the stress has been uh, implanted most of the stress has come to children today and this is affecting their mental well being due to our own pressures which are coming from society and uh, right the and also the inclusion of the situation because it is the not it is not the choices before choices have always been like this right but it is the dealing with that choice and the interpretation which you have the of the choice now i will quote another example from my own very uh, family example that a teenager after completing 18 going wanting to go to a graduation what are the options left he declared at home i don't want to be a commerce student i don't want to get into engineering by any way i do not want to get into the you know arts now three options are ruled out now what do we do now the traditional choices the conventional choices at home were that either he has to be in one of those or the competitive exam and no other choice now the matter was referred to me that he doesn't want to study at all this was the parents response to me right that what do we, what are we going to do with this kid who has refused to study for you know in the higher education on those streams i said okay let me speak to the child so i spoke to that person and i said what do you want to do if you don't want to do this very nice don't do it second one you don't want third one you don't want all options you don't want but is it something which you want so he said yes i want to have a graduation in music now music that was a shock to everybody at home that he will do a bachelor's in music now what are what are the options what are the career options what will he do in life how he he will deal with the life challenges right and acceptance and perceptions and branding and everything came to everybody and there was a hue and cry in the family again so i again had to do the reframing and i said something which he is interested in why don't we allow him to do that it's a three year four year experiment which a child wants to do for himself is he doing a crime by you know taking an option and experimenting at that option let us all become a facilitator right let us not become the vidhata to this child and say that i have already created a end goal in my mind keeping you in mind and keeping your competencies in mind and you have to go that way and there is no other way and i think this sets a lot of pressure so that child is out of the pressure because then i started searching which are the places where this four year bachelor's happen in music and we found something in noida something in chennai and that's the choice was made now he is already passed in second year and he is into third year right so what i was referring to and listening to uh, uh, alok ji that sometimes the pressure is passed on not the actual pressure and uh, you know this pressure is not in the student mind but student has taken it as a borrowed concept and this borrowing happens from the in and around stakeholders looking at them hearing them out and the benchmarks which have already been set up for them and there is a conventional path and we want those people to travel through that conventional path 
i am sorry we have to change our mind we have to see each child each student i am calling child but i mean that at whatever stage we are dealing with the students each student has a uniqueness and the school job is or the college job is to help that student in unleashing that potential which is already there with the student right let us not give him a frozen choices and schools by choice are frozen today schools have not retained their flexibility in offerings right we are not doing experiments enough we are not doing innovations enough in order to provide that kind of flexibility which a today's student is looking forward to now what to talk about career guidance i have to deal with teachers now a happy teacher a healthy teacher a teacher who is already resolved her dilemmas can do betterment of the students and can contribute to the betterment of the teacher i have found that now this uh, mental health problem as you call it i will not call it mental health i will say mental well being and this mental well being has to be you know thought through in an entire ecosystem first we need to deal with the teacher teachers who need to actually contribute to this purpose purpose is very genuine but how do we deal with the mental health health of the teacher teacher today is so burdened teacher today again is to grapple with newer and newer realities and situations and uh, if you look at this covid period you must have experienced yourself that how many of you had to redefine how many have of you had to relearn some of your you know your own adjustment was so difficult in this trying and testing time right and we are talking about students right so student is very important aspect we will uh, talk about student and much has been talked about the student aspect i will refer to the teachers that can we also take care of the teachers mental health can we create a positive supportive system where the teacher gets the help timely help and the hand holding can we create that kind of a collaborative networks of teacher where the teachers can actually draw upon each other's learning and keep on experimenting with the newer and newer ideas because we need to deal with this human being she is not a perfect a uh, model in front of us of delivering all these ideal things which we are expecting from a teacher now this teacher is looking forward to us uh, just a ordinary human being and uh, they have their own limitations they have their own uh, pressures and they have their own uh, performance criteria and lot of issues teachers are going through because i get lot of requests from personally from people that i want to do this i want to do that you know can you help me out so i was thinking that if first we need to first talk about the teachers mental health as well we are talking about student mental health all the time right but we have neglected this uh, 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 aspect which is very important aspect that how a teacher feels right how a teacher will deliver how the complexity the teacher is dealing with what are the kinds of challenges a teacher is dealing with today if you look at the new education policy you are talking about the holistic development of the child you are talking about the multifaceted development of the child very true but what is the curriculum and how the curriculum has been designed right if somebody has to actually make the changes it is not the policy which will be able to implement the changes it is the teacher teacher is the basic unit of change implementer teacher is the change catalyst and therefore i think today i will hammer on the importance of the teacher that we need to strengthen the morale of the teacher we need to strengthen the well being of the teacher we need to look at teacher from a very very you know like empathetic point of view and uh, uh, providing all kinds of support which is never built in teachers also need to relearn teachers also need to unlearn teacher needs reskilling upskilling isn't it but in our education system when was the last time when the teacher did the upskilling yeah what are the new things which are getting added a the the syllabus does not allow us too much flexibility second even if we realize that something new is happening we do not have a flexibility to change on our own right there is a lot of uh, network which is around us stopping us and there is a comfort zone as well of the individual that why should i venture into something new because this is going to uh, a new challenge to all of us to adapt to this new challenge and also uh, uh, augment some new competencies in all of us in order to deliver today the much more nep is now talking about multi pronged strategy multi pronged pedagogy in the class 
Now, how will that happen? Multi-pronged strategy. Mostly our classes are designed one way, right? Are we going to continue with this one way where the students sitting in front of us, we do not know that who is making sense out of it and who is not making sense out of it, who is interested, who is not interested. And then you take an interim exam and you pass the student that your purpose is solved. Can we do assurance of learning in a little different manner? Can we really chalk out the purpose of the course right in the beginning and attract the student with that purpose rather than the syllabus, right? So with a whole lot of new methodologies, new pedagogies have to be experimented. Uh, much has been talked about that uh, social emotional aspect of the student. Now, social emotional aspect learning has to be integrated in the classroom, right? How do we do that? Because, uh, 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 you know, now we are talking about multidisciplinary nature of the schooling system, college system. Now, in that, you realize that uh, one class of student, only one class of methodology, and we have already related it in that manner that this can be taught only in this fashion. Now, this has to be broken. Now, all these new things, new experiments, new kind of vision, a teacher and the school has to create. And then comes the role of that, okay, how do we treat this entity, which we are calling student in that manner, rather than talking about that we need a lot of counseling, a uh, lot of, uh, you know, uh, not only career counseling, but mental counseling to adjustment, uh, 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 you know, uh, to do the adjustment to the school. Now, why these kind of situations are coming in front of us? The whole purpose of education was to, uh, to create a human being who is well adjusted, right? The whole purpose of the education was to make him equipped to deal with his own problems, to solve his own problems, do his own decision making, do his own adjustment. If the child is not converting into that, then I'm sorry that there is some problem somewhere in our educational system and the whole schooling system, right? When we say school, because there is a difference, because I am still holding a school. I call it business school, right? So my, my lingo may go more into school rather than calling it a college or university or anything. You know, I also studied uh, 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 clinical psychology at some stage in my bachelor's and uh, in my master's as well. And I wanted to be a clinical psychologist somewhere sitting in Nimhans or Vimhans and doing some uh, counseling. And that was very close to my heart, right? And then I landed up in IIT Kanpur and I had no choice but to convert myself into a management teacher, right? I'm sitting here as a management teacher. But whenever I get time, I def definitely get back to those individual counseling sessions, personal counseling, right? I, I really enjoy that. And this is perhaps my uh, plan that I will link up with. You have a counseling cell. Uh, we have a counseling cell here in I am Lucknow as well. Uh, now the question is that the typical counseling cells, are they making sense, right? We have so much stigmatized them that nobody wants to approach them. 32 years ago or 33 years ago, when I was in IIT Kanpur doing my PhD, there used to be a counseling cell. We used to be the student volunteers into it along with the teachers, mentors. But uh, it was so much, you know, preventing people to directly approach the cell because there is a stigma attached. So and so sought help, right? And you sought help for what? That was all the more, you know, you're not supposed to tell anyone. So we need to create normal sense of mental health. We need to create more kind of propagation and awareness in the society wherever we go, uh, whenever we get time that this is very, very normal thing to have. If you are depressed, it is normal, right? Most of the people around this depressed person makes him more depressed. I have seen that because you tell them something abnormal happened to you, you shouldn't be depressed. No, it's perfectly right. You can be depressed. You can be stressed at times. Take it as given, take it as normal and Definitely seek out for help and reach out for helping others. But then, first of all, acceptance. That accept them on par. The moment you have a divide that there are children who are mentally strong and there are children who need help, we have already created a divide there. And when we create this divide, students do not want to belong to this set or that set. So a lot of time we have seen that if you look at IIT Kanpur counseling cell today, and I, I looked at that, uh, it has grown multifold. It has become more digital, more accessible to students at their command, at their time, at their wish. 
and also multiple kinds of uh, helps are provided to a student so i think uh, uh, more peer to peer has to be emphasized more rather than a dedicated counseling cell uh, doing its job let us train the students who can come forward volunteer for this kind of service and they will get an opportunity to create this kind of awareness with that acceptance in mind which you have already created for them and i think i look forward to that kind of society i would look forward to that kind of colleges that kind of class where everybody can go together so th that's what we can say uh, you know sarve bhavantu sukhina and we talk about all those philosophies that's that that pays off because we need to now walk the talk enough we have known all these things are remaining in our cognitive map but they have not translated into action still there is a lot of stigma in society if somebody is autistic you right know, you you may be having somebody in your uh, uh, relations or anywhere that a autistic child has to go to a college right do are we prepared for that autistic child to provide that supportive environment where he can get the equal right to education i'm sorry we have not right look at how difficult it is for the parents to make a choice that where and how do we send and to our kids there are schools who are not providing a attendant along with the kids you know because these kids need to specially bring attendants and attendants are not allowed in the classroom right now that itself is a binding factor you talk about career counseling but you first make this environment which is accepting environment and which is looking forward to environment which is giving equal access to everybody and then we reach out then it is inclusive uh, you know policy and then it is inclusive reach and every student will get an equal opportunity to grow and unfold his his or her own uh, you know uh, uh, potential so the, this i think comes to me as a very very significant point and uh, uh, i feel that uh, uh, psychology is a must subject and i realize when i deal with managers i teach them i teach them in training one thing which i realize that people have not known the basics we are talking about life skills some of these things are natural right it should be in the curriculum design in some manner where uh, the moment you have graduated or you have done the post graduate uh, you are already equipped to handle some of these issues which come in front of you now all the managers i feel they should be taught psychology right all the engineers should be taught psychology all the doctors should be taught psychology because without this you cannot learn the entire sphere which we are talking about life skills you will be highly specialized person and this highly specialized person will be with handicap because even the doctor today right much of the doctor if the doctor takes your hand you know in the hand and says oh how are you feeling i can imagine please tell me but today what happens you go to a clinic doctor is not giving you even even 2 minutes to you to describe the disease he is not even looking at you and maintaining the eye contact while writing the prescription and when you come out of this clinic you have a lot of suspicion in your mind should i believe this guy who has not even listened to me properly right so they do not know because they are so busy that 2 minutes and then 2 minutes right this is how you need to handle your patients so every profession i think requires this psychology i'm not calling it a counseling per se but i feel uh, psychology as a foundation foundation course and with the current format of nep it is very much possible and uh, that is being emphasized that uh, uh, do not bind people into tunnels and you open some kind of you know uh, 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 options for everybody and they can master those at their own choice and some of those life skills uh, social skills which alogi touched upon uh, cannot be taught uh, by sitting in one classroom and listening to a teacher i'm sorry you have to engage them you have to engage them in community service he's talking about empathy if somebody has never gone out and ventured out of your home which is so comforting to you and the classroom which is so comforting to you and then you talk about empathy then you talk about social sensitivity do you know how people live definitely we need to send people to villages you know at i am lucknow we have adopted five villages under the unnat bharat scheme and this is with the purpose that these five villages at least 
students should take the uh, projects in such a manner where they should be in a position to contribute to the betterment of this village and maybe no. in two years three years time we shall be in a position to say that we have developed five villages as a model villages in i am lucknow you know in in lucknow or in up because we never look at society we never emphasize towards society we are so selfish and the curriculum also is designed in such a manner that student thinks i just come into term 1 term 2 term 3 my my entire thing is at the end of the roi is my job right so are we recruitment agencies we are not a recruitment agencies we have emphasized in nep as employability very good employability i am very much for employability but we will teach employable skills yeah we may not give them employability sitting in the college but we will make them employable by giving them employable skills now those skills have to be integrated because much we should not think about the uh, uh, you know as a as a uh, uh, system that student when he is feeling uh, getting into this zone danger zone where he has to seek a help then only this career guidance and the counseling will come to the savior of this uh, student no we should make them capable we should make them independent we should make them courageous to deal with the as alok ji said failures and success both we need to be able to give them a sense of what is purpose what is the purpose of life right what do you want to achieve very soon you will see the life is equated with achievements and the moment we have done this equation that life is equal to achievement you are like a robo you are like a machine and you keep on achieving in order to feel that you are living right there is no compulsion i don't want to get into this achievement business but i want to get into the fulfillment business what excites me what makes me happy what i would want to do with enjoyment right students have to be given these kinds of perspective as well right many often students do not realize that what is success they think getting marks is success look at uh, delhi university all parents must have forced their kids to study very hard all of them studied very hard and the first list comes out of delhi university and they say cut off is 100 where will you go now what is the fault of this child who has gotten 99 this is our education system we are creating robots we are creating formatted individuals we have stopped creating creative individuals out of box thinking that is far far away and i think today is the time all the academicians are listening to me and i am also part and parcel of what we are you are and we we have started uh, you know questioning ourselves that what are we doing you know we can't continue to do like this we need to question ourselves we need to get out of our comfort zone in order to introduce something meaningful and that meaning will not be my meaning and your meaning that meaning is towards the larger purpose i either it helps in nation building or it helps in society building right so we have to take the anchors from outside and uh, for years together education system has not evolved itself to the pace of the change outside outside changes have been very very fast and you know uh, uh, all the time changing but very dynamic but the education system has not become that dynamic so therefore the parity factor is missing there so we need to catch up with that speed of adaptation to the changes outside and uh, uh, i would uh, now uh, uh, just uh, alok ji touched upon that and i also want to say that in our curriculum we must add the holistic sense of self and create that self awareness because that awareness factor right from the kg kg and lkg class to your masters classes uh, unless you are a student of uh, psychology which day you are analyzing self which day self was a matter of discussion self was never a matter of discussion in our life self only so self is so integral to our development right that understanding we have to take this matter some way that how and who self right we whether you talk about intelligence whether you talk about emotional intelligence you talk about spiritual intelligence but who is the embodiment of all this it's the self so self has to be defined somewhere so make it a matter of discussion right most of the people are uh, uh, you know uh, developing a personality without knowing about it personality gets developed as a default action 
in a reactive way because we react to the stimulus which is in and around us right from the beginning we are getting feedback from our parents from our elders the right from teachers right we depend on that feedback and by default we are developing certain things in our in, our, in ourselves which is not a very very right way to develop because we are not giving that experimentation choice to the student to develop personality and understand what is right and what is wrong we are also not creating any experiential thing for the student right it becomes all or none either i am having this or i am not having this right so we are we we haven't sp spent adequate energy in the subject itself because we talk about mental health is the individual who feels uncomfortable at the mental level right it's not about the degree it's not about the employment it's not about the bosses it's not about the wife it's not about the kids it is you now that you is so sacrosanct that you need to spend time in analyzing the content of you right and this is where i think uh, read more on your own i will talk about the panch koshas which i am sold to and uh, you know uh, the the entire self concept today when i teach in classes in my training classes in my other classes i definitely integrate this eastern view in of personality in my classes uh, and draw the parity with our uh, traditional frameworks because there is no question of putting them in contrast to each other right they complement each other so i bring in that complementarity between the two frameworks and this is where i say most of us are dealing with the self at only the physical level and we try and groom ourselves we try and feed ourselves right all that so this is known as uh, you know the annamai kosha so annamai kosha is the awareness which everybody carries all the time now this is a very minuscule part of it that you carry your body and body is obviously you can see the body and therefore much more believing in that body that this is how my body functions this is how i eat this is how i you know what very obvious things so this is uh, your body is uh, uh, trillions of cells in your body you need to feed them you they breathe like you and they will rejuvenate like you and so is the body it completes its cycle so if you get lost into defining yourself equal to this level then look at you haven't explored other levels at all so the school is the one who should integrate all five levels right college is the one who should integrate all the five levels in their daily schedule some way or the other now the second the layer of the cell they say is the pranamay kosha and what is pranamay kosha pranamay kosha is the energy level that energy which drives you we all end up telling isme energy nahi hai isme passion nahi hai right but what gives you energy what rejuvenates your energy what energizes you we do not do anything to that effect during our day and not only in the day but entire life right so that a pranamay kosha is important uh, source of energy so we need to understand that how do we rejuvenate our pranas uh, you know the difference between a living body and the dead body is only the pranas they say unka pran chale gaye isn't it rest all is the same anatomical structure remains the same but it is the prana which was actually giving the power to function is eliminated from the body right and so happens to the individuals also so we need to rejuvenate and that's when pranayam that's when you know your a uh, lot of games your uh, activity you need to energize yourself and that has to be reinforced in the curriculum as well and the third layer they say is the manomay kosha which is mind so the mind as you said very rightly that you can't control your mind if you want to and whenever you want to it is again a practice we need to understand that in manomay kosha uh, how many thoughts we keep creating much of the disease much of the mental illness or or uh, mental well being absence of mental well being happens to be because of your thoughts only it's the cognition which gives you all these beliefs and the way you believe you start believing and you start acting accordingly isn't it and nobody can change that if you think i am not good for this job then i am not good for this job now you created a thought which has created a belief and then you reinforce that belief and the others also give you the same feedback teachers also evaluated you lesser in the class now this becomes a pakka belief and you say i am good for not this job right you don't even try that job so manomay kosha is how do you control your thoughts how do you alter your thoughts how do you redefine your thoughts how do you reframe your thoughts now all that also has to be discussed some stage and this 
uh, by tradition they say meditation is the root or uh, you know uh, 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 have a focused discussion on certain things uh, uh, do something uh, to stabilize your mind for few seconds like if you play uh, table tennis if you play 15 minutes 20 minutes at table tennis what happens your mind doesn't go here and there you are totally with the ball right and you are not fixing your attention here and there so find some activity which gives you that concentration on fewer elements without being uh, you know uh, uh, focusing attention on something else so that's the third layer and the fourth layer they say you need to get to that level and that also has to be integrated if you want to have the holistic understanding of yourself is the vigyan mai kosha and vigyan is the knowledge is the wisdom and today what happens in schools and colleges i'm sorry again to say use this word that we are dumping knowledge yeah we are dumping right we have prepared something and we want you to listen to that right and we will also test you on that so this is dumping we only feed the student we only burden the student with information which they don't want so we haven't made the classes excited enough and we have not created that a sense of excitement in the class where a student start creating his own or her own model based on what you are telling them or give them opportunity to create and recreate so that has stopped and therefore uh, this level lot of uh, uh, you know things are there in the minds of people which is which are interfering at the mind level and therefore it shows up on the body level right so this is the kind of uh, focus and the last layer they say that uh, from wisdom now the longing for what more what more can go away and you can actually be satisfied contented and that's the bliss that's anandamay kosha so you are not searching all the time for some achievement to be happy you will be happy doing things in the right way and what you are supposed to do because you are clear about the purpose you are clear about the goal and you know why you did this and why you did not do the other things now that has to be integrated as a daily schedule and that has to be the pattern of thinking and the schools can add this and schools can help the kids uh, in some manner or the other to integrate all the five layers of the self i think that will be a big achievement and then the student doesn't need you day to day student is having that much of power and energy to deal with their dilemmas on their own right they are doing it see how many of us are telling them in digital world how to deal with digital world none of us are competent and nobody comes to us isn't it all their digital problem they solve themselves look at their power of learning they are very very superior learning now you know their their genes have been mutated enough to that uh, cycle where they have evolved and uh, they don't need too much of a uh, generic uh, uh, hand holding and guidance they are smarter lot we need to deal with them very very smartly and very very differently so this is what i think i have to end with and uh, thank you very much and it was, it was pleasure talking to all of you uh, this is not a simple problem in covid period i think we need to get back to the uh, not uh, we had the counselors coming to campus and then we had to graduate to digital mode and uh, now the each student has access to that uh, platform and at their own level because uh, covid has taught us that uh, uh, how uh, critical was the mental well being to refer to if you wanted classes online if you wanted the preparedness from the students to be taught online if you wanted the teachers to be prepared to teach online isn't it all of it was not a simple transition for all of you as well i think and it, it has been a very testing time for all the educational systems because during corona everything was in lockdown only the education systems were the front warriors and dealing with this challenge day in and day out and we came out very strongly out out of these five last five months and six months and it has given us again a very very strong conviction to believe that whatever is the intent of the nep policy uh, we shall be in a position to uh, integrate it in better manner and uh, serve the purpose right so thank you very much if you have thank you very much dr professor rashna shukla for an absolutely wonderful exposition on the subject